Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV7. We've got a program, it's called Thank You for Serving. Let me tell you about it for a second. There are 3,353 veterans, men and women, of all the branches living in Queen Anne's County now, according to the last census. We've been, about six veterans have come on the show, and here's what we do. They all live in Queen Anne's County. You get to know them, you get to know about their service. Many of these men and women gave 20 years, 15 years, three years, uh, sometimes in combat situation, but they served the country and they served you. So that's what you're showing, show, we're showing today. And thanks for watching the station. I have one of my favorite people with me today, Bill Moore. Bill, thank you for coming. Bill and I have known each other probably for 40, we hate to admit it now. We've known each other probably for 30 or 40 years. We've coached together. Uh, our children kind of grew up together in little league sports. Mr. Moore, Bill Moore, is known as Coach Moore. Everybody knows him. Every place I go with him, he knows the history of Centerville. He knows all the people. But probably you know that Bill was a coach at Kenan High School in Queen Anne's County. You probably know he worked at Langenfelders, which we're talking about in a second. But did you know he was in the United States Air Force in the secret war in Thailand, which you'll talk right. about. And Bill, thanks again for being on the show. All right. How about tell everybody, born and raised in Centerville, correct? Right. Okay. Grew up in Centerville High School. And tell everybody about Centerville. Most people don't even know Centerville High School. It was what, Centerville, Stevensville, and Southersville? Yeah, and Kennard. Four high schools. How many kids would have been in Centerville High, you think? We had 60 in our graduating class, and that was the biggest school. 60. I think okay. Ken Allen had 38 <laughs> the year I graduated. Okay. So, so we you, were the big school. And you told me the rivalry between you and Ken Allen was real. Oh, oh yes. It's a great. Now, you were a very good runner, correct, when you went to high school? Played basketball, cross country, and track. Did okay, three so you, you had three sports. Mm -hmm. Okay. You left uh, high school. Now, did you go right to Goldie Beacon? Did you go to military went, first? Or went what? to Goldie Beacon. Okay. And then... Because the family things didn't work out there, and I just said one day I'm going in the Air Force. Okay. Now, so you enlisted? I enlisted. What year was that? 65. 1960. That's the year I graduated from high school, and I mm. went in the following year to the Army. Okay. So you graduated from high school. Same experience many young men had. I did AU. You weren't probably ready for college, right, in that routine. So you go, you'd sign up for the Air Force. Four years? Four years. What are they, what was your, uh, what'd you, first of all, so what'd you have basic training? It went to basic training in Lackland Air Force Base, San Antonio, Texas. Now, how is it, how is it going from Centerville to San Antonio, Texas? It was different. Okay, how was it? Hot? <laughs> but Goldie Beacon was different. That was what was oh. really different. Okay, talk about that. I went from second. Centerville, you know. Right. We grew up, you could just walk across the street, do anything. Small town, USA. You could just go where you want. So. Okay. Like the first week we were up there, we got stopped, uh, Jack Laird and I, walking across the street. Like if you were in Centerville and working at Tolson's and wanted to go speak to Alan Goldstein, you walked across the street. That's my question. So we did that at Wilmington. Well, you can't do that. Oh, you were jaywalking, you mean? Jaywalking, yeah. And they actually stopped you. The cop called us, <laughs> called us over. He said, you two boys are from the country, aren't you? He could tell us. <laughs> the cop yeah. actually said that to you. He said, if, you, if, if, you were, if his car coming, you would have been killed, you know? Really, the difference of the, the way they drive. Yes. And you and Laird are still buddies, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I saw him in Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> with his wife about a week Talk ago. Talk to him every week, yeah. Okay. And you, didn't your grandkids go to Maryland or something? Or, yeah, or, my Do I have that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were at Goody Beacon, and you're doing a, is everybody a business major? Account, how's yeah, work? well, secretaries went there. Business. Okay. A okay. lot of people were bankers. People who went to Goody Beacon, a lot of them went into banking. Okay. So it's a kind I of went a for a year and a half. Yeah, and it was two-year school. Now it's a four-year school. Okay. Did they have sports when you were there or no? At basketball. Oh, did you play basketball going to be? Well, I made a team, but I couldn't oh. afford to stay up there. I had to come home and work on weekends to pay my way. Oh, so you were actually living in Wilmington. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so you're living on campus. Yeah, and there wasn't any campus. There. Oh, okay. It was a, uh, you rented rooms. Okay. And you wore a coat and tie. Nine Class five, every day. Just like you were a real business. It was a business, yeah. Okay. Coat and tie every day. <laughs> I think that's funny. And the ladies wore dresses. Okay. So Centerville, where we can still cross the street. And, when you want to, yeah. I've told you the story. Bernie Sadusky lost an eye. I lost an eye. When we cross the street, one has to look to the <laughs> left, one to the right. But there's no traffic coming, I, which is good. So joined the Air Force. How was basic training? Basic training in the Air Force was easy. Oh, good. I had a brother in the Marines and a brother in the Navy. Terrible. Oh. They couldn't believe what I told them. Oh. 
Now, how, we tease you about it. We tease all the Air Force guys. I didn't hate basic training, but I just I wanted to get through it. Why was it? What was the difference, you think? Just their attitude? I just went to class. And okay. I wanted to, because I was a cross-country runner, I wanted to just do the obstacle course. Okay, okay. All I was wanted to do. <coughs> Excuse me, okay. But one day we had to do the obstacle course. It rained. <laughs> we didn't do it. That was it. You didn't do it. No, my brother Marine said, oh, if it rained, that was when they want you to do the obstacle course. Were, were the drill sergeant the Air Force easier on you? or how? Because I, mean, I can remember as an 18-year-old kid, a drill sergeant, because I was messing up, in my face calling me names that I've never been called. No. That didn't happen. A little bit, but not much. I was a boy, uh, got sent to Boy State in high school. Okay. And they had Marines there. Right. You, which you, you yeah. go for the week leadership okay. when you're in high school. They were worse than the Air Force. They were, they were. <laughs> yeah. The Air Force, now, before we continue with you, supposedly better food, better oh, living yeah. conditions. That's what they said. I think you told me, in basic training, were you in one big, I mean, everyone's sleeping in the same barracks, no separate rooms right yeah. now. Okay. How about later, and we're, we're going we're to go back in a second. When you got to duty stations, if you, did you, Air Force guys have separate rooms? Oh, no? yeah, we had, a, had our own rooms, had a desk. You're kidding me. <laughs> I didn't see a separate room for three. Yeah. You really? Okay. Everybody had room, and you like I say, went to the dining hall. You never pulled KP. They had local people did that. Civilians. Yeah. You just went in there. We only had like 50 people. No officers. Winston Salem, North Carolina. Really? Yeah. Worked in a radar tower. Okay. So you you do basic training. It didn't scare you, tear you up. You're pretty comfortable. <laughs> then go from basic to Amarillo, Texas, for okay. tech school. Okay. Now what was tech school like? Uh, they said it was supply, but I never really worked in supply. Okay. At the radar tower, if the radar broke down, I was the guy that found the parts. Oh, okay. They call it NORS, not operational, ready supply. So you found the part that was broken yep, and I, you put it? Yeah, they had, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, they put a lot of radar bases yeah, all up and down, uh, down the East Coast. Oh, the whole East Coast. R Roanoke Rapids, so they were, you know, I could call different people. But that's what they did. I guess they thought the Russians were going to invade. This might be a stupid question. Would you, were you stationed? I'm out of the Air Force, you're stationed in one place and they'd fly you to all these different sites to fix things? If, oh, no. No, you were just right there. Oh, okay. And like I say, it was between Winston-Salem and High Point. Oh, just the, that was, yeah. you had that territory and that, there. That today is a park. That's a park. It's, you it's, guys it's, are Winston-Salem, oh, we had a, okay. you know, softball fields and erect mm -hmm. facilities, basketball courts. You know all the Army, Marines, and their guys are out here yelling in the audience, right? Yeah, people do. I mean, guys wore wingtip shoes. <laughs> you know? With the there wasn't any officers. With yeah, the yeah, but okay. it, it was mainly the Air Force was a lot of really smart guys smart that smart didn't guys. want to get shot at. But they were smart enough to go in the Air Force. Yeah. Yeah. And one guy had a physics degree from Hopkins that yeah. worked in the radar tower. But these were kept that <laughs> people that kept the radar tower running. Yeah, it had to be. Smart, and I was right? the guy that they would come and say. I'm going to need this. Can you get it? Part. And I got it. So. Okay. Now, so you, now, how long did you do that? Or that was a couple that, of years. Oh, a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Now, from there, did you? Where did you go? How, how do we? I mean, we're going to. I guess the best part of the story. How did the whole Thailand thing, the secret part? How did that all come about? Well, if I hadn't volunteered, I think I'd have stayed in Winston Salem the whole time. Your whole, all four years. Yes. Yeah, I want to see something, you know, okay. besides the United States. Yeah, get out of here. So I volunteered, and that's how I got sent to Thailand. Okay. Now, tell everybody, most people were out there, wait a minute, more is full of baloney. We didn't fight in Thailand. You had a great hat that someone stole from us. Yeah. Would you please give that hat back? <laughs> uh, what were we doing there? What were you doing there? What was going on in Thailand? Well, they called it the secret war. It was the most secret base in Thailand okay. at the time. Now, where, where in? It was north of the DMZ on the Mekong River, Okay, 230 miles from Hanoi. So you're right on the river uh, in Thailand. Yeah. Now, I'll be quick. And then there was a big base, little base? It was we had maybe 5,000 people. Yeah, 5,000. Okay. They called it Task Force, Task Force Alpha was okay. the spy station. They had the spy station, which was listening to the Chinese and all that. Okay. Plus, they had the rescue missions, which was another part, which that's who I worked for, the wing commander. Okay, well, let me, let me go back. Okay, spy missions. Again, for the dummies like me who are in the Army, you're spying, by listening, I mean, you're listening with the a, listening devices. Yeah. And they were getting all the communication. There's huge towers. They had, back in those days, which was IBM, I think it was a 
360. Okay. And it would probably do a half of a gigabyte. Weighed tons. Really? You know, a whole room. Okay. You know, oh, you mean the actual set? Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing. Would now, it was scanning? The, I mean, it was, I, again. Yeah, it was lit. Well, they had sensors. These planes dropped the sensors on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And if somebody stepped on one, it sent a signal back to where I was. Okay. Because the Ho Chi Minh Trail was just across the river. Right. And then they knew there were troop movements down. And then they would send Scramble people to bomb whatever. There. See, we were listening there, and that was all secret. But also with, to the Chinese, you know, because it was yeah. way up north. Yes. Now, I don't know what they were saying. The people, did your relatives, I mean, did people know, hey, Bill Morris in Thailand? Or, yeah, they knew. Oh, they knew. Okay. I don't know why. They, I mean, I, I, they knew where I was. Okay. But most Americans didn't know, did we? Mm. I, I, mean, yeah. I, I, I never thought we were in Thailand. So we were listening to the Chinese, monitoring the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Now, you're part of the rescue. You, you, I the was rescue? in, yeah. I worked for the Wink. Well, when I went there, I was part of the NORS operation which was if same thing. If the plane broke down, they needed something, had a secret clearance, you call back to the United States or you call to Vietnam, find this part for the okay. plane. And you actually, that's what you actually that's did? That's what I did okay. for the first two months. But then I, I told you before, most air forces, and I guess same way everywhere, they have like a Catholic service and a Protestant service okay. or okay. a Jewish service. Right. Right. But we had, because the wing commander who was the head of the base, was an Episcopal lay reader. So that's the service. And I grew up, you know, St. Paul's right, guy, right, right. St. Paul's Parish. I went to the Episcopal ser service. And he said, well, you want to read a lesson? I said, yeah, I'll do that. So a couple of weeks I read a lesson. And he said, are you going to stay in the Air Force? I said, no. <laughs> he said, because if you're going to stay in, you don't want to transfer out of this because that's what you'll do. Okay. That's your MOS. Right, right, right. I said, no, I'm getting out. He said, I'm going to transfer. You're going to work for me. Oh, and this is a guy who became like your mentor. We're, we're, now go and keep going. So what, what did commander. that involve? Yeah. Now this is the boss. This is the head of the whole oh, base. The whole base. Okay. Two weeks later, I was out on not operational ready supply. I was the assistant, uh, non-commissioned officer, the head of logistics. So you were his go-to guy. <laughs> I was his go-to guy. What, so what type of stuff did you do? Same thing, whatever they needed, believe it or not, we had better food, as you said, best I, food. Air Force kills me with their food. We yeah. would take food on a C-47 mm -hmm. and fly into Saigon. Okay. Apparently they had more tools than they needed. We were having trouble getting tools to work on the aircraft. Right. Take their trade food, food for tools. All government. <laughs> take food, get tools. Okay. And uh, he said, these people need help. The Thai people. Thai people. Okay. And we have... A lot of stuff that they don't. And the local superintendent of schools, you were a mm -hmm. school guy, mm -hmm. he was speaking English. He worked for us in the summer. Okay. He said, you're going to go around with this guy, and whatever he needs, we're going to try to and get was it. Was the guy a full board colonel? Or yeah, full board. Full board. So he, full was, board. he, was, he was up high, there. Okay. He was the highest guy, yeah. Same thing as Navy, captain of a ship. Okay. He was like so he was that aware of the people surrounding him and said, Billy. Oh, yeah. So what happened when you were with the, the Bernie Sadusky of Thailand? Right. Yeah. Oh, and then we would just go, if he said, if you can find paint out in the field, Air Force gray paint, right. if it's got rust, get rid of it, give okay. it away, okay. which was just his way of saying, help him out with paint. Help him out with paint. Yeah, help him out with paint. <laughs> so that's plywood. And they would paint the, the school buildings. and uh, the... We built some out of plywood. So I took the superintendent. We had to take something to the dump one day. So I took them down to the dump, and they were burning these bomb boxes, the Boxes that the, the bombs, bombs came, came in, in okay. were two by eight sheets of plywood. In other words, it was two by eight right, and four right, sides. Right, right, right. They were burning them. The superintendent of schools, right? Can I you, want this. Can you believe that the superintendent of schools in Queen Anne's County would say, don't burn a bomb box, I can build, <laughs> I can build a hey, school. Hey, Bernie, would you burn that box? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't burn the box, we're going to okay. build some schools. Okay. So I hauled enough bomb boxes. <laughs> so after the bomb guys knew what we were doing, I didn't even have to load them. Okay, they, they would they, they, they would load it up and they would say. And what would they use them for? Or you don't know. The sides of the schools. Oh, actually, the sides. Oh, they built schools out of bomba because oh. it was braced yeah, up by two by fours. Okay, so it was good solid stuff. Oh, it was good two by four, good plywood. Good girl. Just burned them. So our trash became their schools. Their schools. Isn't that amazing? And Americans that don't know how painted it must Air be. Force gray because I mean they had writing on what it was and stuff. Has any? I know it's been fifty years. Is any? I mean, does any of that stuff still exist? Do you think? Or you think it's long gone? 
I don't know. And pretty amazing. They're pretty amazing, yeah. They're pretty amazing. Uh, probably not. They probably have regular now, schools. Didn't you now. once tell me that you had something to do with an orphanage there, too? Oh, yeah. Yes, so yeah. then word got around, and I guess he got back to the colonel. There was uh, Baptist missionaries. There was orphanages. Mary No, have you ever heard of Mary Yes, Mary No Nuns. Mary No Nuns were there, the world. Yeah, all yeah. out in the jungle. We were out in the jungle. I mean, this was in the jungle in on the, the Big Long River. Is, okay. Yeah. And they just built it right on the Big Long River. Okay, now you built an orphanage? Is that what it was? Or you just donated stuff? We to... donated stuff. Uh, okay. Mattresses. That was a big thing. Now, yeah. how would you just drive them in two and a half ton trucks? Or how would... Yeah, well, since I worked for, the, he, had, he got me a Datsun. That's like your truck. Pickup truck. Okay. I had a Datsun and driving on the other side of the road. <laughs> yeah. And that's how a whole lot of stuff, like right. the bomb crates, had to get a Datsun I had. It's heavy stuff. Yeah. But now, a lot of the stuff I did with the Datsun truck. Uh, how about any other stuff? We helped an orphanage. We built schools. I mean, was he constantly sending you on missions to give them stuff? Or? Oh, yeah. The, uh, and I don't know how you do it, but you can convert refrigerators from electric to propane. Oh, he sent, and he did that? So we did that. Like, I mean... The Mary Noel sisters, people would cry. They'd go crazy. They'd cry. Oh, I mean, you'd break I down and cry because so. you gave them a refrigerator. They didn't have them. Didn't have them. All that stuff went to waste. Same way with the Baptist guy. He had three kids. Mm. Yeah. Now, was it, again, due to my ignorance, was it Thailand a, a safe, I mean, you, oh, yeah. were you in any danger there or what? They said there was Vietnamese around that area. I never saw them. I was out in the jungle. Uh, one place we helped, which we had to fly to, which I told you, was a leprosy colony. Talk about that, yeah. Yeah, the, the friend, Colonel Hess, that was his name, Colonel, Colonel Hess, Hess, was friends with Dr. Fisher, and he volunteered. Now, he like, was your Air Force doctor, Dr. Fisher, or no? No, he was just a civilian guy. In Thailand. Would become, he would volunteer two months a year. To go help to Thailand. work and out. operate on these people. Oh, wow. Apparently, leprosy affects nerves. Okay. And the people in the jungle, it didn't, it didn't hurt, so they never worried about it. But then they got infected, and they would lose hands, mm. lose noses, and the Thais thought that you did something wrong. It was a punishment from God. For punishment, yeah. Okay. So the, okay. you went, it was an island. At now, okay. that's a they had their own island with the lepers. With right? the leprosy colony. And we would put, like, say, paint, mattresses, everything. Whatever they wanted, they would just take us to Chiang Mai, which is right up on the Burmese border, and we'll be back and get you in three or four days. And just leave you there. Just leave it there. Yeah. Amazing. Maybe now, help around there. Now you, you've always told me, and we've, we've met a lot of people from Thailand on the trail when we helped mm -hmm. with the sheriff. How about the people? You said they're the most wonderful, I think you've said to me, they're oh, the yeah, most yeah. wonderful people in the world. Were they very gracious and kind to the GIs? Or the Thailand airport? today, I mean, their publicity was, is called the land of the smiles. Thailand. That's what it's Thailand. called. If you, <laughs> on their publicity stuff in Thailand. It's a good name. And that's good true. Name. They didn't steal from us guys that came from Vietnam said, you can leave your wallet? Yeah, you can leave your wallet down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can do anything you yeah, want. Yeah, when I was in Vietnam, we had people who used to um, clean up after us, and you're right, anything you didn't nail down, it was gone. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, they were yeah. good people, but they were just poor people. They had to survive. But the Thais you found, how about Thai food? Since everyone now gives a Thai restaurant, it's a big fad. I didn't eat the Thai food. Oh, you didn't? Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> they had a regular food, you know, steaks oh. and stuff downtown. Oh, okay. Oh, I ate so. on the base, but I mean, they had regular well, What was downtown like, the like? In Pleiku, I wasn't allowed to go in the, in the Army. You could go downtown in uniform? Oh, I went every night, just about. Every night? And you go to, what would, what would describe? Well, you could rent bicycles, ride around town. Okay. Or, I mean, like, biggest center? Go to restaurants or, or uh, and bigger? From maybe the, more like Churchill. Okay, Churchill. And it was but it's big now. Oh, it's big Two, now? Four-lane highway, yeah, because the Air Force Base, once we left, and it was on the river, they have, like, hotels. You know, people go there for Where vacation you now, yeah. You Wasn't were. any hotels or anything there, you know what I mean? But now uh, it sounds like, would, you, would you big. do any recreation in the Mekong Delta? You couldn't because people, chew, uh, I mean. No. Uh, I went swimming in there, but it was just muddy. The muddy Mekong, they call it the muddy Mekong. Is that Mekong. right? But you, you could, I mean, there could be recreation there. Yeah. Oh, okay. All but right. it, I mean, it wasn't the safest. It wasn't clean. Okay. It just, it was and like you didn't, couldn't go too something. far because if you went too far, you would be in Laos. You and then you start shooting at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't do that. So you could, now did the Air Force guy, you're going to kill me again, this Air Force thing. You know, this is proving how dumb I am. Would you work a nine to five day, 12 hour day, seven days a week? How was the work schedule? I just worked nine to five. So you had like a regular work day? With the, with the commander. That's oh, oh with the commander, okay. Yeah, but at NORS you worked shifts. Somebody had to be there all the time. Yes, okay. So you worked shift work, but I was always days. But it's just, 
crazy luck that I got the job. Oh, okay, it was a good. It's <clears throat> so another reason I got out. Oh, I figured okay. nobody can be that lucky. <laughs> it they won't get, happen. To they, they get sent to <laughs> North Carolina, <laughs> yeah, and then to Thailand, and then get hooked up with an Episcopal lay reader. Yeah, the, who, now, who takes you like a son, you know. Did you get overseas pay and combat pay in Thailand? How did that, see, I got overseas and combat pay. Did that happen in Thailand? Or? Well, every, I got it three months because if I took the stuff to Hano, uh, not to Saigon, Saigon one day, if you went one day, you got it. Oh, yeah. okay. So just entering Vietnam. So I went and flew back. Okay. Now, how often would you do that trip? I, mean, I, did, it, I did it three or four times. That was all. Oh, oh totally. Totally. Okay. Most of the time, it was just local. I'm <clears throat> going to... Chiang Mai, you know, where the leprosy comes Right, right. Now, see, you talk about a nine... So, at, at the end of the work day, could you get into civilian clothes? Or? Well, all the time. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't wear civilian clothes for three years. Okay. Yeah, I was in civilian clothes more than... you kidding me. Uniform. Now, did the base have stuff... I mean, did the base have movies and stuff? Or you just yeah, had movies. Time? Okay. Basketball courts. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, Swim yeah. pool. <laughs> Swim pool. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to re-enlist for the Air Force yeah. just to be treated well. Uh, now, how long were you actually there? 14 months. Oh, so you had, now was that, everyone was there 14 months or just you? Or, was that, was everyone had yeah, to stay there 14 me, months? Yeah. What happened when, you know, did you come back, were you discharged or did you have more Air Force time? Oh, I'll tell you that. that uh, okay, please. <laughs> that's a local story there. Oh, okay, all right. But the interesting thing about the leprosy colony. Okay. <clears throat> when I would go there, the local people, you know, the ties that worked in the office. Right. You come back, oh, they yeah. would say, oh, you've been gone, where have you been? I'd say, <laughs> oh, McCain, leprosy. You were out. They were gone. They would take off. <laughs> really? And the girls in the office who did key punch, you know what I mean? Right, and they right. were secretaries. Right. All the local people, like key punch was going to be the job of the future. Right, as you right. remember, we, I mean, yeah. if you're a key punch operator, you were you're going to have a job yes. the rest of your life. Yeah. No, you're going to have one maybe five or six years. Ten years, yeah. Yeah, right. another ten years. Same way the computer at the Task Force Alpha I think it weighed three tons, mm. and it did maybe 10% of what your laptop does. Oh, I know. My cell, <laughs> you know, my cell phone is more powerful it, than this computer. That was, yeah. Mm. And they would run, and the girls from the, uh, most of them had college educations, and they would come oh, over. The Thai girl, the women had gone to oh, university. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. All they were all spoke English. Oh, wow. Yeah, they worked in the okay. office, did a key punch. They would come over, and they would rub my arm and like, <laughs> and they would tell them in Thai. No, you're not going to get it. You can't get it. Oh, you have to have a cut. It didn't make no. <laughs> you were you were in trouble. <laughs> no, for the next three or four days, they now, didn't get near you. Did, how many ties were working on that? Was a significant. Oh, a lot. oh, really? And did but all types of functions or? Yeah, okay. my and my interpreter when I went out in the jungle, because the superintendent of schools was just there temporary. Right. He was an exchange student. Okay. He he went to high school in Iowa. Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, during, so he could speak English real oh, okay. well. Okay. So he was, a matter of fact, he was raising money to come back to go to the University of Iowa. So come I, back. I don't know if he ever, because if he came back and went to the university, good he chance went. he didn't go, never back. go back. Yeah, he didn't uh, go back. Did you ever have, I mean, this might sound silly, did you ever have any contact with any of the Thais nationals after you got out of there? No. No, not no, no. Okay. Like I never had any contact with any of the Korean uh, Katusas or anybody like that. Well, it sounds like the so you could actually wear civilian clothes after duty. Yeah, we couldn't leave the base. Oh, in civilian. In uniform. Oh, okay. Couldn't wear, couldn't leave the base in uniform. In uniform, you, yeah, had, you had to wear, had to wear, had to wear civilian clothes. Hey, you get a pass like we'd get to go in the, the village. Oh no. No, you could just go. <laughs> you just get on the bus. You just walk in the bus. <laughs> they got to get on the bus and they took you to town. We had to wear uniforms. You had to have passes. The MPs would stop you to get. Though I have to ask you, let's stay in Thailand. Your, my, your claim to fame with me is you were in the same room with Raquel Welsh. Now, tell and Bob Hope. Oh, okay, tell, please tell us about that. Yeah, that's and we're in a Christmas show. Oh, right, tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, because since I worked for the commander, that's where they, you know, they landed at the air base and they'd come in to commander and they would right, right. take them down to. I think it was Holly, you know, it was like an amphitheater. Okay. And they took them down to the amphitheater. And well, they did a show right on your base. Oh, yeah. They, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. If you can, you can watch that today, like if you type in Bob Hope 1967, you know, part of it's at Nacon Okay. Now, did, did you go to reception with Bob Hope and Raquel Welsh? They just, just came in the office and they, oh. know, they talked to the commander. Okay. And people say, did you talk to her? I, no, I did this. <laughs> you just stared. You were afraid, I just like, stared. Oh, I didn't say anything. You know? oh, uh, so 14 months in Thailand, a uh, regular work day, 
but you basically became a, a go-to guy uh, yeah, for, the command. for the commander. It's kind of like you did at Langan Photos. Weren't you the go-to guy yeah, there? Well, I mean, that, you yeah, did well, that I stopped there, and I was the operations manager. So I ran the, you know, okay, right. ran the company for the ran the job for the boss. Now did so you I traveled all over the bay, you know? Okay. So did you? That was your, was the at the end of the fourteen months were you done? Tell, you, you said you had a local story. Was the military four years up after Thailand or not? Yeah, well, if you had less than ninety days, okay, left, then you didn't have to go to a base. All right, okay. But, it just carried you on paper yeah. for ninety days. Yeah, so I didn't want to do that. Or you could extend for six months. And I didn't, then I'd been over the time. Okay, you just want to get out. But, but somebody told me the only woman on the base was Joan Sorflayton. I think you no, met her. No, who's Joan, Joan Sorflayton? Tell me she, who she is. She lives in Centerville. The one person, the one in woman. Centerville. The head of, uh, you know, the people on the base. Right, right. Was from Centerville. You're kidding me. So there's two people from Centerville in you know, Thailand. In Thailand or Thailand. What are the odds of that? She was a kid. Of course, she was an officer. Oh, she personnel. Was. She was the personnel. Okay, officer. personnel. Now, so, did you know each other at all? Nope. Oh, you didn't. I know. went to see her, and she would say, "What are you doing?" Told her, and she said, "Where are you going to go?" And I said, "I don't want to extend for six months. You know, I know you have to do that." And she said, "You're from Centerville. You don't have to do <laughs> Get that. Get out of here. You don't have to do that." So they literally carried you in paper for they, not, two months. Two months. She extended. You have. It was the rule. Six months. Oh, okay. She extended me for two months. Is this woman still alive? Yeah. She, you can say thank you. I you. saw her at the. Uh, at our 60 year reunion. What's her name again? Joan Sorflayton. Joan Sorflayton, okay. Yeah, oh, you might know her. Oh, I probably know her by face. Yeah. So that's an amazing. So I had 88 days. Oh, so she carried you for 88 days? For two months. So that way I had 88 days. Okay. I was two days under the 90. <laughs> so I didn't have to go anywhere else. Uh. So I had a choice of going five months at somewhere else, which right. I didn't know where I'd be, or two months there. And I liked it. So I said, I'll do the two I'll months. I'll do the two here. months there. Get okay. out. Well, you're, obviously your military experience was great. Air Force One, the Thailand, I mean, you got millions. If the people in the audience don't know it, as you and I do this trail for the, uh, the sheriffs, anyone who's from Thailand, you're immediately in conversation with, telling stories, and you still know a little Thai. Oh, yes. yeah, so I still speak Thai because I was out in the jungles. Would you speak it fluently when you're there or not? Enough to get by. To get by, okay. But right now, to up-to-date that, I saw it on Facebook. It's called in the Campanon downtown. Where you were? Where I was. Okay. So I clicked that, and then on Facebook, you just click the translation, and you can see what they're saying. In English, yeah. So I sent a picture of me sitting on the Mekong River. And they put it on? They, they put it on there. Like, put that on downtown. I got like 80 people responded. responded. All like, right, it's great. I like that picture. One guy, <laughs> it was a black and white picture. Right. Some guy in Thailand turns it into a colored picture that I sent you. Right. Oh, he yeah, he colorized the text. Yeah. And people would say, oh, when were you here? And then I send them a picture of the secretary in the office. We're going to try to find her. But yeah. I, I never heard back from that. But yeah, I got a lot of people. That's pretty amazing. They still do. Would you like to go back? Oh, no interest. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Oh, okay. It'd be fun. I know there's a Long lot. Long flight, that's a trouble. That's, and the, but there are a lot of veterans groups and a lot of different groups that are doing that now. In Vietnam, they're building schools and still doing that. So yeah. I'm sure in Thailand. Hey, my well. neighbors. Two doors down to Thai. The guy was in the army. Okay. And you know, nicest. Have you all talked about it at all? Or? We all we talk to her every day. Oh, okay. So you yeah, have she was one who was in John Hopkins for. Oh, you yeah. when you told me about it. Okay. Yeah, she was sick. Well, boy, look at our times. That, I told you this would be the quickest half an hour of your <laughs> life. We ride the trail every uh, two days a week for two hours, and poor Bill gets grilled like this every day. But this was the quickest half an hour. Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. Okay, I really appreciate it. As usual, you've proven again. Any idiot that went in the Army, Marines, is just right. that. You yeah, Air Force guy. In the Air Force. Since you told me you had to wear civilian clothes to go into town. To one it. thing. Okay. It's safer behind a typewriter than it is behind a tank. Well, I always remember that. Walter Pauls would agree with you 100%. <laughs> My name is Fred McNeil. We've been talking with Bill Moore, who's in the Air Force, had a great experience in Thailand. Uh, Bill, again, thank you. If there are any veterans out there who'd like to come on the show, contact us. My name's Fred McNeil. My time's up. For all you veterans, thank you for your service. My time's up. Thank you for your time, and we're going to see you next time.